Hi guys, um, in this little video I'm going to try and show you how to produce sections and look at the section tool settings uh, which are very very similar to the elevations. So look, I've just opened up a project I've borrowed from a student and I'm just going to go to the ground floor plan and we'll get a look and uh, I'll just turn on the sections layer. I don't want to turn on all the layers but I'll just turn on the sections one just to demonstrate to you people what uh, the markers look like. Now look, to be honest, I, I think we can create the sections and indicate uh, you know where they are by these markers, but I must admit that um, these markers uh, are probably a bit mechanical for design drawings, and you might try a simpler one, and you can actually uh, adjust those in the section settings. So what I mean is you can go in, and you can go down to the marker, and I think there's a marker symbol and you can choose and you, you can maybe go for a simpler one and it might be worth looking at some design drawing examples in the uh, kind of textbooks you get in the library or perhaps even online. Now look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just generate a whole new section, uh, you know, uh, uh, but I'll open up the section tool first, which you can locate uh, in the viewpoint. So you can see over here you've got the section. And you can double click here and it'll open up the settings. Now if we look at the general, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here we can just accept as default, but just be careful. You know, you leave it at infinite. Uh, I don't think we need to do any limited or zero depths. And we're not doing skyscrapers, so I don't think we have to worry about this vertical range uh, t uh, at the moment. Now we've mentioned markers, but let's look at this model appearance because there's a few things in here which we will probably look at later in terms of the cut fill, what uncut elements look like, and also there's a thing called, uh, well, shadows, which we'll look at. So I think what I'll do first is just um, create a section and then let you see what it looks like. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to hold the shift button down because I don't want my section going all off and it's on a chord. And then I click here and I want to look up the way, so I'm going to just click. Now you could look down, it's up to you which view you think is going to give you the most desirable. You could try both of them if you like. And what should happen then is that that section should have been created in the organizer. So if I go over here, we've got this B2 section and I'm just going to drag it over as I, you know, into this folder that's been created. And then what we'll do is we will right click on that one and check the view settings. Now we've been really pressing home the importance of layer combinations so let's change this one to sections. Leave the rest of them. I think the building plans no markers will work but perhaps to be consistent we'll just say sections. Now this thing graphic overrides we will demonstrate later and this uh, example already has a graphic override, but I'm going to make it no overrides just for now to let you see what is actually created. So if we click OK and then double click this, let's see what view actually appears and then we'll decide what we want to do with it. So really it's going to show me a view with various things cut through and uh, hopefully the uh, you'll see that there's a few things that can look a bit busy and messy with relation to these slabs and this earth fill and the fact that the roof and the mid floor and the walls are all got different kind of treatment. Now there's a number of ways we can deal with this. Um, so the first one um, is one that I've really only discovered recently to be honest but I think we can get it onto the section settings. So what you can do is uh, right click here and just be careful that at the bottom, what we're looking for this time is not the view settings, but actually the section settings. So I'm just going to open that up. And what we're looking for this time is where it chats about cut elements. It's got cut fill, non-shaded. So I'm going to hit this and then the pop out, I'm going to say uniform surface. So it's more or less going to try and say anything that's cut through, it's going to treat the surface with the same kind of patch pattern or fill. And here you've got to decide on it. So the one they do at the first, I'll just leave it like that to let you see what it does. Um, and I don't think the first, uh, the general thing they give us is very good. I mean, you can see what it's trying to do, it's, but it's just a little bit light. And we might have to kind of do something on top of this because um, 
you, you, you can try bringing things forward, but if it doesn't do anything and you still get this thing seeping through, we may just have to use a fill pattern to mask it off. And what I mean by that is just grabbing this, perhaps doing a gray and you know something similar. And I'm not gonna pick an exact pattern at the moment, but I'm just trying to demonstrate just the technique that you could use. And if I go over and come down a little bit, and it might be, uh, um, I'm just trying to demonstrate. Okay, now that could come down the whole way. And you really, if you have time, you could try and match this fill or else you might say, you know what, I'm gonna make it completely distinctive. And if you have time, you could go in, if you've got stairs like this, you would uh, trace the stairs, but you can definitely make that more dense. And if you want to kind of make uh, this stand out as a foundation. Now, that's one way of making the section look less busy as to use the fill and the uniform surface. Um, what I'm gonna do is just take that back and show you another option that we can use. So if I go back here and say, um, you know, this general one, and instead of using that kind of light gray, you know, you could pick a darker concrete or something as well. And it should probably make the walls and the roof and other elements, you know, punch out a bit better so you can see the solid and you can see the void. Okay, so you can play around with that until you get something consistent and try and avoid little things like the steps. So you might just put a hatch pattern in here. But okay, that's one thing to consider. Let's look at another approach. So this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take that back to cut fill non-shaded and we'll just see what that looks like. So it's gonna take me back to the kind of colored earth pattern and various things. Now, this is where we can use another method called graphic overrides. And what I'm gonna do is just bring over the Moodle page for a second. And in the Moodle page, you'll see you know, I'm in it as a student. So if you just come down from near the top, you'll see a folder called graphic override files. I would advise you to click that and just look at the files in there and download them one at a time. You c I'll show you how to apply it to the section, but you can then apply it uh, to your floor plans as well if you wanna get rid of the orange bright windows. So if you just download this and then make sure you put it somewhere you know, that you'll find it. So I tend to basically, um, you know, put it and drag it onto my desktop so that I can get it, uh, you know, readily accessible and I can find it quite easily. So once you've done that, you can leave Moodle. And what we'll do then is go back to the section view and you'll see down below here, there's a little thing called no overrides. And beside that, there's a little icon. So if you click that, uh, you'll get a dialog box. Now at the minute there's overrides in here and I think this person has already got the ones that I want. So I'm gonna delete those just to show you the um, process and the workflow. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little button to import those. So if I go import and then you go to your desktop and there's the file that I had downloaded from Moodle. So I just highlight that and go open. And really I should be able to go okay now and it should change the drawing. Uh, and hopefully it's gonna make, kind of do the same thing as that uniform. Uh, we're not getting as much things kicking out through here, but what we could do, I think in this, uh, that looks to be a mesh. You can play around with sending things to the back using the display order. And then if, if this person was just to, you know, put a little hatch over this, and then when we bring it into the layout book, we could just stop the frame, crop it here. All this would need then is some um, room names and maybe the sky and shadows, which I'll move on to next. Now, the thing you gotta watch out for though, is if I go to a different drawing and then come back to that section, it may revert back to the way it was. And the reason for that is that we didn't make that overrides adjustment temp, uh, sorry, permanent. And what you can do is just go View settings and under overrides, that thing I brought in should be available, which is the section cuts neutral. And when I go OK now, that should lock it in and Archicad will know to keep it uh, like that. 
Now what we're going to demonstrate now is how to put maybe a sky or a background in here. And there's a number of ways of doing that. You could do it with a simple fill, you know, using the fill tool and just change it to one that's got maybe some light blue. Okay. And you, you might just then say, okay, I'm going to draw a rectangle and just choose something close to the bottom, you know, and then get it. You don't have to go all the way up. And when this happens, you go, right, that doesn't look too good. But what we do is just grab that fill and display order, send it to the back. Now, the other problem we've got now is that we can see through the building to the sky, and that's not what we want. So what we've got to do is right click again and go to section settings. And this is where we're going to look at uncut elements, as in things we can see in elevation. And at the minute, there's nothing there. So try going to surface color fill non-shaded. And that should hopefully punch out what's the shape of the building. And now what we're seeing here is that there are some shadows already in this um, section. So I'm just going to take them out to let you see uh, the effect. And then we'll come back in. So you can see that you've got this white kind of background now punching out from the sky and that's quite effective. Uh, what we'll do now is to say, well, look, okay, I want to put some shadows in here. And when the shadows are there, they seem to make this all dark. So I'm going to try and play around with the angles of the height of the sun and the where it is on plan. Um, so what I'm going to do is just right click and go into section settings again. And basically, if we go to the model display or model appearance, really go down to where it says shadows. And then you can choose what you want in terms of the fill pattern and how dark or light you want them to be. And this is the height of the sun. And I'm going to make that as if it's winter. I'm going to say 12. And we'll just try it at 45 and see what effect it has. So if you wait a couple of moments, you can see the shadows are getting here. And you might say, well, it's coming over a little bit across here. So you might have to play around again with the angle on plan. And I'm just going to change that to something quite small as well. I'll maybe try 10 or you know, 20 or perhaps. But let's see what it does. And it's just giving you a kind of a fairly pleasant image that, yeah, that one's, you see, you get more white in the shadow. So you can then just put the room names in here. That's obviously that wall that was punched out for the uh, internal rendering. But then your uh, section becomes quite a nice image. And if you get some people in here, you're probably finished. Another way of doing the background, which you could try on your home computer, but it's not easy on the virtual machines because we can't get out the hard disk, is to go File, External Content, Place External Drawing. And what you have to do then in a Windows machine is go into your C drive, program files, and you've got to find Graphisoft and then ArchieCAD 25. It's a little bit different on a Mac, but I think if you go into applications, you can get to ArchieCAD and then you'll also be able to get at the library. And I'm just going to go to background images. I'll try simple. And you can try a simple sky, and I'm just going to choose any one of these. It doesn't mean to say I like it any better or worse than any other one, but you can play around and try some. And you just click. And because uh, I've, I've filled this in already, uh, the sky is not kind of swamping or overwhelming my image. Um, what you can do is just select that and adjust the frame, bring it down to maybe a more, and then do the same. And, you know, you've got a quite a nice image there as well with some people. So I think if you practice those techniques, hopefully it'll enable you to do some nice sections. And all you got to do is drag those views onto the layout book as before. So best of luck with that. And uh, if you have any trouble, uh, the team will obviously try and help you out in the class. Thank you.